My name is Vincent Solandro. I'm a senior studying broadcast journalism. And Professor Hall had us read one of your articles titled uh, Ellis Island in Reverse. Mm. And so my question sort of stems from that style of reporting more in depth that maybe the general public wouldn't really have a knowledge of. Do you think that news consumption and understanding from the general public has sort of been impacted negatively with the advent of things like Twitter, Facebook news, and push notifications to understand those more complex issues? See, I, th I think if you want to start with that part of it, I, I think it actually is great because it, it makes it much more accessible to all of you. But I think the onus is on all of you, the readers, the consumers of the news, to do a better job discerning what is actual fact and what isn't. Not what I want to read and what I want to believe, but what is actually true. And you can put the blame on the media, but I'd put it right back on readers who are concerned about this. You don't have to be using these tools. You can be far more selective in how you use these tools, and you should be far more discerning of the information as you read it, when you read it. It's part of why now when you look at a Washington Post article online, you'll see sort of above the headline, it may say analysis or opinion or perspective. Mm. That's put there to tell you this is not regular straight news. Uh, same goes when you tweet it or Facebook it. Suddenly it pops up now in the headline, analysis colon or opinion colon, because we're trying to disseminate between what is you know, actual hard news and the other stuff, fake news as some call it, um, or just regular opinion. So the, the, the reason that came together, that was a great trip because- I was going to ask you to tell us about how you came First off, my that. mother's from Guatemala. I visit that there. That was the fact I asked them to see if they could find out about you. Uh, they, uh, we go every year. But I had never before had a good excuse to report from Guatemala. The reason I was there in the first place, or primarily, was because Rand Paul, as he was thinking about running for president, he's an ophthalmologist. He would diagnose my pink eye tonight and tell me that just, you know, <laughs> keep, I didn't get punched. Not to it's, do an interview. It's pink eye. Um, and it's not contagious anymore. Um, but he went down to do cataract surgeries with a group from Utah. And it was designed to sort of soften him up and demonstrate that there's this other side of him that people may not realize. And he performed hundreds of cataract surgeries over the course of a few days. And so we went with him with, for that. But before I went, I had met with the Guatemalan embassy here in town. And um, it dawned on me that there was this facility at the airport that I'd seen from the terminal before where I know they bring back people who get deported. And so I just asked a simple question of, can I go see the place where they allegedly come back? And they said, sure, because there's flights that come like twice a day. And it's just, there's, this, there's this room that's not much bigger than this where they bring in hundreds at a time who come off the plane. And they were people who were, you know, at the time, this was three years ago, they were just you know, caught up in immigration violations and were being sent back. Some had done it multiple times. Some this was the first time. Some were giving up and some were saying they were going to go back at some point. It required, though, being able to speak in Spanish. So that was, that was part of why I was able to do it. Is I knew that you had to be able to go in and, and talk to them and very quickly get them to talk to you because it was a process that's only supposed to last about half an hour once they land. They get processed and then they leave. So that's all it was. It was just a very, it, it, we did it after the, the part with the senator. We had done that story. We filed it. I wasn't leaving until the weekend, I think. And I had said to my editors, I want to build in this one last thing because I think it's important to go see it. And, uh, and we did. And what I found most revealing about it is that this photographer who I was with, who's traveled all over the world and covered all sorts of problems, just we got in the car and he broke down uh, hmm. on the way back to where we were staying. And I kind of went, what, he's like, maybe I'm tired, but he's like, there's just something so wrong about this process. And, and, you know, and it reminded me that we had to reflect that in the story, and we did. Um, but it was just one of those sort of neat chances. Of, and, and, and the Rand Paul thing had come, I saw it in a news report in passing that he was going, and I immediately emailed his spokesman and said, hey, I'm from there. Like, can I tag along? Because this would be really cool. And they weren't originally planning on taking the Washington Post, but when they realized that I had the connection, they realized there might be actually be a benefit in taking me because <coughs> I could better explain why he was going to the specific part of the country. Um, so that actually ranks as one of my more uh, distinct sets of assignments. Um, 
and one that in hindsight now uh, is far more relevant and urgent.